Well, it's now one minute to Zilly Rose. And let me just say, if there isn't a person that's like a spiritual beer farmer, uh, Zoe Rose would be one of them. Huge supporter of the community, uh, good friend of mine, good friend to the beer farmers and friends uh, to um, ferrets and hackers everywhere. Zoe, do you want to uh, say hello? Tell us a little bit more about you and um, we'll uh, kick it off. Uh, yes, okay. Um, yeah, uh, what do I want to say? Hi, I'm Zoe. Um, my handle is RoseSecOps. Uh, a bit about me. Um, I, I've i just closed out, like, I think I'm late in celebrating, but uh, my a decade of technology career. I think this is technically my 11th year now, but we'll say it's a decade. Um, and so it's actually kind of a big change for me um because uh it's like i've done 10 years and now i'm starting 2020 in like a really big fresh and hopefully uh, more exciting uh i don't know outlook if that's the right word um wh what else do i want to say um what else about me oh and obviously ferret sec ops also a massive part of my uh, daily life so definitely going to chat about them in this um, conference <laughs> so 20, 2019 though saw you uh, on some huge stages uh, you, you're a regular did. on the on this on the speaking circuit what mm -hmm. advice would you have for folks that are wanting to start out I mean you, you how did you end up starting out as a speaker well, um, my very first talk was in 2015. Uh, it was back then called Besides Winnipeg. And uh, if you remember, Ian, uh, and I talked about network configuration management. Very sexy, I know. Um, but it was in a pub and I got 150 people, I think was the... Um, the numbers at the time yeah. excited and they were like hacker hacker type people you know they were they were nerdy but they were also like you know talking about the cool sides of security and i got them excited about network configuration management and i thought that was mind you i also created a tool that i was demoing that was super insecure uh <laughs> because i didn't really like I, I built it knowing it wasn't quality but just as a concept not as a don't ever deploy this on your network. It would be a horrible idea. Which and, everybody um, then does. In yeah. Industry, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, I needed to learn Python. So I built it using Python, PHP, which I still don't know. Um, you know, I had SQL. It was, in, it had, it was vulnerable to SQL injection. Um, and uh, I used a bit of um, HTML, obviously, for the website, and then CSS to make it look really sexy. So it was a black website with green text obviously hackerish and very elite super but but the whole point of it was it was such a boring topic but something that i absolutely loved and then people in the audience at a pub maybe alcohol helped but they were excited about it too and so i think that that still to this day is one of my favorite talks uh it wasn't great uh the quality of the talk probably wasn't there but it was something that i was really passionate about and I carry that through in every talk that I ever do. It's always something that I'm really excited about and I want to share. And when I get feedback, uh, besides the feedback of spiteful people, because uh, <laughs> you do always get some not so happy responses. No. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> On Twitter? Yeah, I Never. <laughs> <laughs> I had one person tell me, I learned absolutely nothing from this talk. And I was like, well, you weren't <laughs> listening then because I talked about not being a jerk. But yeah. okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyways, um, so uh, but really, when you do a talk, do something you're passionate about because it's not easy. Um, you're not going to know everything uh, and you're not, you're not going to necessarily be able to answer all the questions. But the fact that you go up there and you express something that you really want to make a difference and to share, um, and then you know, get other people in the audience excited with you. That is the best feeling ever. And then my recent talk, um, I spoke at go to Copenhagen. I think that was my last one. No, besides Copenhagen. So those two in the same week, 
Um, and afterwards, I'd, I spoke about um, two different topics, but I had people coming up to me after, uh, and besides Copenhagen, one was like, you know, I really liked your definition of diversity because he'd said that, you know, everybody always talks about gender diversity, but what about the different things like tech and, and um, experiences and so on and so forth? And for him, that was really impactful and that made me really happy. And then besides um, Copenhagen, Copenhagen um, it was their first one. And one, it was brilliant. Um, I was the only female speaker, but um, unfortunately, somebody made a very rude comment. Well, it wasn't rude. It, it, they asked me if I was single in my questions uh, time, but um, the organizers right away stepped in with like, that's not appropriate. Um, don't do that, you know, and reminded everybody about the um, code of conduct and everything. And I thought that was really brilliant because I laughed it off because, you know, I get that sometimes it's, you know, whether or not they think I'm attractive, I don't really care, but it, it's really awkward. Um, I did remind them that my very large Polish uh, partner was there. <laughs> um, but, um, but the fact that the organizers stepped up and were like, that's not okay right away was brilliant. Um, and it was really supportive, you know. And so I think there's, you know, not only did I get to share my passion, but the minute somebody was like, mm, I, I'm going to ruin this exciting moment for you, uh, the organisers stepped up and, you know, made the difference. And honestly, it's one of my favourite conferences, the fact that they did that. Um, not that it wasn't a brilliant conference anyway, it was actually quite brilliant. Um, and then also afterwards, um, so I volunteer with um, Operation Safe Escape. It's an American-based um, uh, not-for-profit for victims of uh, abuse um, and then helps helps them get out of it so they can, you know, be survivors of abuse, you know, get out of that dangerous environment and start their new life safely. Um, and when I mentioned that, just briefly, not in depth, somebody came up to me afterwards and said, you know, I really like that you mentioned this. Um, I have a friend that's going through something that I would like to provide them with advice and so I was able to direct them to um, Go Ask Rose, the public website for Operation Safe Escape and to me that even if they didn't, even if the audience didn't actually learn anything from me, I hope they did, but even if they didn't, just having that one person be able to find support uh, through me was probably the most, I don't know, probably the most rewarding thing. Um, so. I guess my very rambly way of saying, you know, if you're going to speak, speak about your passion and celebrate the small wins um, because it, it's really easy. And I do this today is get feedback and then I see all the big stuff and then I see that one jerk response and I just feel so demotivated. And I'm like, oh, I didn't do anything. It wasn't good enough. This one person, says I'm horrible and I'm listening to them and that's absolutely silly so I guess um yeah just celebrate your wins and um talk about your passion <laughs> do you have another question <laughs> yeah I was gonna get Sean to jump in with a question but um I guess he's uh away from the, from the oh there he is there, I'm sorry. I might have put him to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was just trying to get. So, so one of the things I've seen um, a lot happening, especially recently, is a lot of negativity, um, especially like trolling and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that? Like, how do you recommend people should kind of avoid that or switch it off? Do you have any sort of things that you use to help? Um, it's really easy to get caught up in the drama. Um, I like to call it drama llamas. Um, because llamas make me laugh and uh, it's kind of a great way to like instantly make myself smile and so I kind of remove myself from that um, but I think I think the biggest challenge is this industry is so I'm right and you're wrong you know it's so negative it's so not okay, <coughs> toxic <laughs> It can be very toxic and and it's really easy to just go down that rabbit hole and just keep getting toxic and keep getting worse and keep getting more angry. Um, but actually, um, and what um, I think this year has been a big, big reminder for me is, um, if you don't know, uh, last year I was diagnosed with depression and it was really like horrible. I, I've never had to deal with depression before in my entire life. I had no idea what it was. 
and honestly it got to the point where I couldn't work I couldn't eat I couldn't get out of bed mm. it was so bad and over the last year it was just me kind of relearning how to do things and relearning how to you know I know on the outside I you know kept doing conferences I kept going to work but outside of that um I did nothing I went home and I went to sleep um and it was really horrendous but in last year I started um something called Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and um it's basically a great way to define it is uh uh, some people call it chess for people, other people call it uh, folding clothes with the person still inside of it. Um, it's brilliant fun and it's ridiculous and you get to wear awesome clothing. Um, but the reason that for me was really impactful is because it's not my daily job. You know, it's something I do outside of security and it was a great way to, you know, get active and then when when the drama llamas of the security industry came came up and attacked me. I would just turn it off, go offline, and then go to the gym. Um, it also let me meet my partner, which was quite lovely. Uh, so that also had a positive, obviously, um, having a safe and uh, welcoming home is massively beneficial um, yeah. and is the reason I relocated to Ireland, um, you know, being able to admit when I need help was a really hard lesson for me. Um, but I think it's also a really hard lesson for people of this industry where typically if I say, I don't know something, I get ridiculed. Whereas if in a developer conference, um, I say, you know, X, Y, Z about security, they'll come up to me in after and be like, oh, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. Um, and they're happy to admit it. I mean, I don't work in the developer industry, but from the outside point of view looking in, I've noticed a difference in their kind of security or their conferences. It's almost safer to be like, I don't know that. Whereas in security, a lot of times it doesn't feel safe to admit that I don't know something. And I actually still get anxious about it. But um, I guess I'm really rambly, sorry. But basically, no, you carry um, on. getting out of that drama filled, toxic environment is actually stepping back and recognizing those people that are being so toxic. I pity them because they're really unhappy. Whereas I've got this brilliant community in the BJJ, um, you know, uh, gym community here in Ireland. I have a brilliant partner. I have ferrets that are absolutely ridiculous and they literally, you can't be sad around them. They are you Instagram just... famous, that's for sure. <laughs> they are, and they've got a Twitter account. And the funniest part is when I go to conferences, they get more followers, like it's really weird. Um, <laughs> but they just, they make me happy. And you know, just having those outside, um, outside points of view is really massively beneficial um also i mean ian's on here i've i have other people in the security industry but ian being the, the one that i'm you know talking to um <laughs> when i was feeling really really bad you know i'd yeah. message him and he would be like don't be silly zoe you know we kind of need you it was Whereas... mutual. i i had a rough <laughs> year too to be honest and um you know this is the community uh, that i think is can be under the right circumstances, incredibly supportive. And I actually wanted CyberSec Stu to jump in on this because um, he's got a lot of experience, I think, in dealing with that toxic element. So, mm -hmm. Stu, <laughs> hashtag drama talk, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stu, Stu, uh, do you do you resonate? Do you do you commiserate with Zoe or? Yeah, I, I think I think it's quite interesting because I. You're absolutely right. I, I, I have to say, I've done a lot of talk at developer conferences, and it's a completely different feel. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's it, just a, a much nicer, friendlier. Everyone's there to learn. Everyone's there to help each other. And, and I think there's mm -hmm. probably there's a lot more collaboration in developers, whereas an info set can be quite solitary in some cases, right? So mm -hmm. I think that, that might be that kind of um, cultural thing, right, where they're used to working as a team to build something, and therefore, you know, it's very much that kind of mentality of cross collaboration, uh, open source development probably drives that mentality. Whereas infosec, you mm -hmm. can be a very small team um, against against the business. But yeah, in terms of toxicity in, in, in infosec, I think I think it's there is I think it's a very small group, but they get a very big voice. 
Um, yeah, that's and, right. And, and, and I think that detracts. So there's been lots of Twitter drama around very small things of people being targeted at conferences for posting photos and things like this. And, it, it, and the people then, as part of the crowd, will jump in on that uh, because mm-hmm. it's easier to uh, jo- join in than it, than it is to challenge these things. And, I, and, I, mm-hmm. and I, I'm always trying to challenge as much as I can. And I've, I've had quite a lot of recent experience of people backlashing mm-hmm. against that. When, when you call something out, I think you... Um, you get a, as much attention uh, as you do for, for, for targeting someone in the first place. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's also often, I, I often find that it's, on Twitter particularly, it's easier to pick a fight than it is to focus on why we're all doing all this stuff in the first place. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I, often, I often find, because I can be quite argumentative, I think it's fair to say. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and oh, I would have never said so. Never. Well, you in particular, Sean, know well. You, you often tell me to mute and forget about it, but I'll not mute and forget about it. I'll actually go mental and yeah. But you're argumentative with us, let well, alone the rest of it. But it's it's challenge. The word is challenge that you're looking for there, Ian. Um, <laughs> but it's I don't find it easy to mute and move on. That's the point I'm making. I, mm-hmm. I find it a lot easier, I think, to go back to the the troll or the idiot that's out there on Twitter and can and try and take them down. I do have case history. So I'm just probably the opposite end of that scale. I'm, I'm not, I don't find it very easy just to forget about it. But you know what? You know what? One thing that really resonated with me, um, with my partner, is he would always say to me, you know, that's a little problem. You know, that's, that's nothing. Your life itself and your happiness is so much more valuable than that person's negativity. So True. really, as much... And don't get me wrong, I still struggle with it as well. And I'm like, that person on the internet is wrong i want to correct them but but it's almost like it's not worth it like i i like that an- analogy i don't know who it was but somebody shared that analogy of like the number of spoons you have in a day and you only have a certain amount and you know sometimes you have less sometimes you have more but you have to be very you know careful about not overusing it or running out before the end of the day and and that to me really made sense maybe not spoons but maybe something else but but just the fact that actually, as much as I want to correct that person, as much as I want to say, no, you're wrong, you're a jerk, stop doing that. On the other hand, it's like, yeah, but why bother causing that grief in my in my chest, in, that, in my heart and make myself suffer longer? Because I'm giving that person the power to make me unhappy. Mm. So in fact, actually, if I just ignore them, and I've been doing it, I am very liberal with my mute buttons now. Um, <laughs> I, I quite love that uh, muting. And Excellent. so I'll, I'll just mute the person and be like, you know what, that person doesn't matter to me anymore. Um, I'm going to focus on the people that do matter, like talking to my friends, the community, and the people that I'm mentoring. Because if I'm going to mentor someone and advise them to do something, just like my clients, if I tell them to do X, Y, Z for their security, I better you know i bloody hell better do it myself because if i don't then i'm just being a hypocrite and i'm being just as bad as the malicious actor because i'm almost i feel like i'm almost lying to these people and telling them to do something that i can't even do myself yeah i think i agree with i i I completely agree with what you're saying i think sometimes i think it's a case of it's a a case by case basis i mean ian Ian will remember my exchange with falinor which happened earlier this year and here we have an example of a, a right wing, clearly a racist, misogynistic bastard, right? Um, and he needed taking down. He was destroying a lot of people's lives. And mm-hmm. I just thought at the time, yeah, you can ignore people like this, but they're just going to go away and ruin other people's lives. And so I went. That, that's sh- a fair point. You know that's what I mean? Point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But but going back to that statement of only doing as much as you can, I mean, don't ruin your life to try and you know stop someone. Agreed. get the support of your community and you know take care of your health because I would like to get to the point where I, I remember those years ago I was part of this community and I loved it and then there's two people that decided they hated me and they kicked me out of my own community and it really broke my heart and I really felt awful about it for a long time and maybe it's just I'm getting older but then I started to realize that well if that community some of the people still chat with me, and but the ones that didn't and decided to listen to the person lying to me or lying about me, maybe they weren't as close of friends that I thought they were. 
So, you know, like kind of measuring what's the healthy amount of drama can I handle? How many drama llamas can I balance in my day? Um, So I do agree using my, you know, influencer or power or whatever I do have. um, It's not much, but uh, sometimes I think my ferrets have more. But um, but, uh, but using that for good, I think is massively beneficial, but also not to the detriment to myself. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. that's fair. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, Zoe, uh, time's up, I'm afraid. Wait, wait, I have one question for Zoe before she goes. Really yep. quick one. Go for it. Since okay. you're doing jujitsu, does that make you a security ninja? Um, I feel like I'll say yes, not because I'm good at it, but because that sounds cool. Um, <laughs> I think you deserve the title. Yeah. Brilliant. I will take it. <laughs> perfect. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Zoe, for your time. Really, really fascinating stuff.